Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Anonymous Walk Embeddings. So it is from researchers from Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology and Credio Research. And this paper came out somewhere around 2018. So at very high level, the paper introduces the idea of embedding entire graphs, which was again one of the objectives of the previous paper that I explained, which was titled as graph to vec So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'll put that video in the I button. Make sure to check that out. But yeah, just don't go now. Wait for this paper. After this, you can go and check that paper. Okay, so let's start with the abstract. So they propose an approach for embedding entire graphs. And they do so by defining something called as anonymous walk, which is again one of the graph objects such as nodes and subgraphs. So they use this graph object on which they apply some task independent algorithms for learning the graph representations. So as you know, like in deep walk and node to vec, you consider the random walk to be the graph object. Whereas in the previous video of graph to vec, they considered rooted subgraph as the graph object. And here we are talking about something called as anonymous walk. So let's see what this is. Okay, so basically anonymous walks are nothing but anonymized version of the random walks. Where if you see what a random walk is, let's say this is the graph that we have. And this is your starting node. So at the next time step, the random walker object will have like two possibilities, either to go in this direction or to go in this direction with equal probability. So we are considering the vanilla version of the random walk in case you have some weights that way you can kind of bias your walks as well. So let's say we choose this path. So now we are at this position. Again, we have like three possibilities. Either it can go backwards or it can go to its right or it can go downwards. So again, if you randomly select with equal chances for all of these three paths, and this is the one that you get. So here is your random walker object right now. So you continue this thing till the path length L. So that sequence what you get of nodes is called a random walk. So here you get an extra privilege of knowing what is the label of those nodes. Let's say A, B, C, D and E. So I traverse from A to B, then B to C, then again maybe to A and then B. So this would be one of the sequence of the random walk. Whereas in anonymized random walk, you would have no information about the node. So think of this example. Let's say this is the graph that we have. So this is one of the random walks that you start from A, which goes as an A, B, C, B and C. And then this is the second random walk which is C, D, B, D, B, and then the third random walk. So if you want to convert this random walk into some anonymous walk, and as I just mentioned, like we do not have any information about the node labels or node descriptions. So we keep an eye on the index of the order in which we traverse these nodes. So for example, we give A as one because it's the first node, then B as second, then C as third. We do an increment because all three nodes are different and that is the progression how it's happening. Then after the C node, we again go to the B node. Now B we have already seen earlier and its label was 2 because it was second in that path. So we again put a label of 2 over here. And similarly when B goes to C again, we put a 3 because that was the original first label where it occurred. Hence the anonymous walks become 1, 2, 3, 2, 3 which corresponds to A, B, C, B, C. I hope you got the idea right. Let's also see one more example. If this is one of the random walks that we have, which goes from C, D, B, D and B. So here C is the first node, D is the second node, which is different. So we increment the counter. Then B again is the third node, which is again different from D and C. So we again increment the counter and put it as three. Then we again go to D, which has already been visited at the second position. So we again put it as two. Then we again go to B, which has already been visited previously at the position three. So we again put it as three. So our anonymous walk pattern looks like 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, which is again similar to what we had for the random walk 1. So here you can see some kind of a similarity, which is like a random walk over different subgraphs would have different meanings or they would be kind of different, whereas it is not necessary for the anonymous walks. Because once you discard the descriptor or the label of that node or some kind of a identity from that node, you essentially boil down to just knowing if you have already visited this once and what was the index when you visited that. So yeah, this pattern could be like similar across many L length paths that you traverse across the entire graph. And similarly for random walk three. Okay. So if you see the formal definition for this, let S be U1 to UK be an ordered list of elements where UI is one of the vertex. So all these are vertices. So S is a sequence of vertices from one to K. So then they define the positional function as this, which takes in two parameters. First is the S, which is an ordered list of all the vertices that you traverse in a random walk and then UI, which is one of the vertices and you return order list Q, which is defined by all the positions where this UI occurs in that random walk. So for example, if this is one of our random walks, 
then position of A in S would be just 1 because A occurs just in the first position and nowhere else. Where if we see the position of B in S, we'll get an array of 2 and 4 because at second position and fourth position B occurs. So yeah, that is what the POS function does. Now moving to the second definition which is anonymous walk. So if W is a random walk with vertices V1 to VK, then the corresponding anonymous walk is a sequence of integers defined by A which is F of V1, F of V2 till F of VK where f of vi is nothing but the minimum position in that array of that particular node. Which means, if you see this again, then the id corresponding to the anonymous work for this node b would be just 2, because that is where it first occurred, thereafter it occurred for 4. So we always keep the minimum of this, or you can think of the first occurrence of any particular node. So yeah. Okay, so this we have already discussed, so let's move further. Okay, so now here the authors talk about rationale behind choosing anonymous walk. So the analogy that they have given is, let's say this is the graph that you have. And think of this as social media network. And let's say if this is you, and the network is pretty private, which means you cannot know the entire topology of this network, like what are the connections, what are the node labels, and so on and so forth. So in such scenario, the best thing that you can do as being an observant on this node is to kind of do a random walk from this node to the other nodes that you have and you do it multiple times. So that way you kind of get a sense of nearby nodes or the things that you have visited. But the problem here is like since it is a private network as I mentioned and you don't have any label identities. So in that case, one of the ways of doing the walk would be doing it anonymously. Where again, the idea that we discussed is like you observe all the states as their indexes. And in case you repeat them again while doing a walk, you refer back to its first occurrence. So yeah, this is one of the ways to kind of explore the network in such scenarios where things are pretty private, okay? Now they talk about the algorithms. So talking about feature-based model first. So let's consider a weighted directed graph G, which is a tuple of V, E and omega, where V is nothing but the set of all the vertices that you have, E is all the edges, and omega is a set of edge weights. So if we now consider a random walk R, such that every edge between any two pairs of nodes such as U and V, would be normalized based on the summation of the out degree nodes of the current node V. So a random walk W of length L on graph R is sequence of nodes U1 to UL plus 1, where each of the edge weights that you have is nothing but the probability of selecting that edge weight in that current random walk. So if we now want to know the probability of the entire walk, then it can be calculated as a product of independent probabilities of all the edges that basically consist in that random walk. So let's say if this was one of the graphs that you had, this is also the walk that you sample and let's call it as W. So probability of this random walk would be nothing but the multiplication of all the weights that you have. So yeah, that way you define the probability for the walk. Number of all possible anonymous walks of length L in an arbitrary graph grows exponentially with L. Okay, so yeah, there's one more observation. So on the X axis, you have this length of anonymous walk, which is the value of L and the Y axis holds the total number of walks for that particular length that might occur in any of the graphs. So let's say if we consider the case of three, and let's say these are some of the random walks that we sample, A, B, C, then we can have B, C, A, we can have B, B, C, we can have C, B, B, and so on and so forth. So the anonymous walk corresponding to the first sequence would be like one, two, three. For the second, again, it would be one, two, three. For the third, it would be one, one, two, then it would be one, two, two. So like this, we'll have five unique patterns. And as you increase the length of the walk, let's say till 12, you can see like the number goes as high as 4 million. Also, if you glance this chart, you can easily figure out it is going exponential. So yeah, that's what they mentioned over here. Consider initial node U with set of all random walks as this that start from node U of length L and capital W basically belongs to the set of all the random walks. And let's say these all random walks correspond to a eta different anonymous walks, which we define like this. Then they want to calculate the possibility of seeing any anonymous walk that starts from node u of length l. So which they define as this. So there's nothing but the summation of all the random walk probabilities that start from node u. So since anonymous walk is kind of a higher level representation of all the random walks, so the summation is one way of aggregating the probabilities of all the walks and giving that value to the anonymous walk. So somebody can think of this in terms of fast text, but the idea is not about probabilities but about embeddings. So let's say if this is one of the words, which is occurrence, it would kind of break it into certain number of n grams, and then it would calculate the embeddings for all of these n grams, 
and to get the embedding for the entire word occurs, it would do a summation of all of these embeddings, which is the embeddings for these smaller n-grams. So that way you kind of get a centroid point in the space of n-gram embeddings, which kind of represents the entire word. So somewhat similar idea is what you can apply over here as well. Okay. So now if we want to calculate a probability of choosing any anonymous walk, which could be like from any of the starting nodes, not specifically you. So you basically do a summation across all the nodes that you have and then you divide by total number of nodes. So that way you get the chances of selecting any anonymous walk of length L let's say from that graph G. And if you substitute the value of this from earlier equation, you get P of W over here. And then what is P of W? It is nothing but product of multiplication of all the edge probabilities that you have, which give the probability for that walk. So yeah, that's the idea moving forward. So with this background, now let's see what exactly is feature based walk embeddings. So let AL be equal to this, which is set of all possible anonymous walks of length L. Okay, so if L is equal to three, then we have this eta value to be equal to five. We have seen this in the graph. Then the anonymous walk embedding of the entire graph G is nothing but the vector FG of size eta. So the vector size is nothing but five. Okay, so if we talk about I equal to one, then this is nothing but the probability of seeing this anonymous walk. And let's say for third, this is probability of seeing this third anonymous walk. And how do you calculate this? As we have already seen in that equation, this one, yeah, which is dependent on random walks. Also the computation of anonymous walk embeddings we have seen kind of depends on the probability of all the walks that you have from center node U. So if you kind of scale that U across the entire graph, which means you'll have like many U's, many nodes in the graph, and calculating these possibilities of all the random walks with multiple edge combinations becomes computationally intensive task. So for that, they propose something called as sampling technique. So as complete counting of all the anonymous walks in large graph is feasible, we describe a sampling technique to approximate the true distribution. Okay, so they independently kind of draw m random walks, which gives you an empirical distribution of the anonymous walks. But since we are doing a sampling, and we want to be sure like this empirical distribution is as close as possible to the true distribution. So for that m has to be really large. So we'll see to how do we derive the value of m. But before that, let's formulate this task formally. So let this be set of all the possible walks of length l. So let's say if eta was five, which means l was equal to three. So the graph embedding is nothing but a vector of length five, where each of these indexes is nothing but probability of that walk, let's say a1, probability of a2, probability of a3, till probability of a5. So what we are talking about here is how close can we get this probability of a1 to the actual probability if we would have considered all the random walks from the entire graph. But now since we're considering just m random walks, this will be kind of approximated. So they define the L1 distance between both the distributions by doing a summation over difference of empirical and true distribution for all the anonymous walks that you have. So yeah, so the value of M is defined by this ceiling function, where let's say if L is equal to seven, then you will have these number of possible anonymous walks. So now if we set this epsilon to 0.5 and this delta to 0.05, this would result in a M value of 4888, which means we'll have to sample these many random walks to get empirical distribution of anonymous walks which is close to the true distribution. So what this epsilon and delta would mean is, so if you see this equation, the distance between the empirical and actual distribution, if it is greater than or equal to 0.5, and the probability of that entire thing is less than or equal to 0.05. So which means the chances of the difference between this distribution going beyond 0.5 is less than 0.05. Whereas if we further decrease the value of epsilon to 0.1 and delta to 0.01, you are further trying to bring those distributions closer because the difference greater than equal to 0.1, the probability of having this is less than equal to 0.01, which means 99.99% of the times, both the distributions have a distance which is less than 0.1, which means they are pretty close. So for that to happen, you'll have to sample more number of random walks. That's why the number of walks that you see is 122,000. So based on the constraints to how close you want these distributions to be, you'll have to sample higher number of walks. That's about feature-based anonymous walk embeddings. Now talking about data-driven model. So now here the idea is similar to what doc2ec or paragraph vectors do in the context to NLP. So those are basically trained on skipgram or SIBO kind of algorithms, where if we consider SIBO, let's say continuous bag of words, let's say we have a sentence S and then four words that we sample. So all of this goes to a neural network. So you have this embeddings for each of them, which you initialize randomly. 
and at the output end it is again supposed to produce a word that lies in that sentence so the sentence i'm considering to be the window size but you can have let's say window of five length then if you're given like four words and the sentence then we are supposed to produce the fifth word so yeah, this is how the siebel algorithm works and based on the cross entropy laws that you encourage at the output end when you back propagate you adjust these weights and you eventually have the embeddings for all of these segments so yeah same is the idea what they apply they iterate over each vertex u in the graph and sample t random walks from there and then you map those random walks to anonymous walks and this is what they call as co-occurring anonymous walks because the starting node is same so for every sentence you'll get this set so you'll have s1 with this set s2 with this set until su with this set so then what they say is notion is analogous to having multiple sentences in document then the smaller unit which was words in the case of doc to wake would become anonymous walk over here so yeah that's the idea for this now if you see the diagram so let's say this is the graph that we have and let's say we have a set of four walks from every node so these random three walks become the context to this graph and it goes to the model you concatenate their representation and finally do a prediction for the left out anonymous walk and again based on the loss that you incur you learn these matrices yeah so yeah, this equation is pretty clear you have these context this is the window size this is the document or the graph you want to predict another anonymous walk and this entire thing is defined as a softmax function where this thing what you see is nothing but the output from the model which is defined as this where u and b are the model parameters so yeah i think we are done with the paper now I hope you also found this paper interesting as I did. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with your friends to whoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye bye and take care.